There's a lot of singing going on in this season. Just a basket full of songs. Songs about men in red and white suits. Or just deciding that they're going to come to town. Men who, a man who knows if you are, you're sleeping. A man that knows if you're awake. Just songs about a man that knows if, if you've been bad or good. And then turns around and encourages you to be good for. There's a lot of, lot of singing going on. There's a lot of singing about a fictitious character. Snowman who becomes animated uh, with a carrot for a nose and two button for eyes. I mean, a lot of singing going on about an animated animal who takes and personifies a person. Something unique about this deer, you know, there's a deer. And they, they tell me that he, he has a shiny nose. And they tell me, if you ever saw him, that even you would say it glows. Fictitious character. And then there's some singing about Jesus. I don't want to be a Grinch. I don't want to be an... Ebenezer Scrooge. But the devil has performed the biggest deception of history. To have a nation put the most important icon in history in the same basket with a reindeer with a shiny nose. The devil can't destroy Jesus. He cannot remove Jesus. But what he can do is put him among other fictitious characters. And just because these are the holidays and people are singing about these things... I believe it is time for the people of God to get Jesus out of the basket with Rudolph. I'm not trying to be a Scrooge or anything, but that is the greatest deception if we pay attention. This is who we worship every day. And yet society has found a way to be as joyous singing about a man in a red suit coming down a chimney as they are singing about a holy night when the very son of God is born. May we never diminish and demote Jesus down to a Christmas carol. I want to invite your attention to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number uh, we're going to read verse number 1 through 5 verses 1 through 5 and we're going we're gonna to do this briefly and we're going to give you a word and even on this morning I want to say you know happy holidays and all of that uh but we want to be educated even on this morning in the word of God. This is the age where people want convenient truth. Because convenient truth soothes. But everything that soothes you is not helping you. And everything that, uh, everything that sounds good isn't true. But I want to talk to us this morning for a few moments. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, beginning with verse number 1, if you found it, say amen. amen. For the law, since it has only a shadow of the good things to come and not the very form of things, can never by the same sacrifices year by year, which they offer continually, make 
perfect those who draw near. Otherwise, would they not have ceased to be offered because the worshipers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have had consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins year by year. For it is impossible, as somebody say impossible, for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Now, the Bible says in verse 5, therefore, <laughs> when he comes into the world, everybody say when he comes. This is not somebody coming down your chimney. It's not some talking about some, some historical, fictitious character who came. This is talking about when he comes and he came. He says, sacrifice and offering thou hast not desired, but a body thou hast prepared for me. When he comes... Or when he came, sacrifices and offerings you don't desire, but a body you prepared for me. Turn to your neighbor and say, he was born for me to bleed for me. And that's what I want to talk to us for a brief moment this morning. He was born for me to bleed for me. In order to understand this, and we're going to get right to the gusto of it, we need to have an understanding of what's called the sacrificial system. Everybody say sacrificial system. When God revealed himself and when God manifested his law, he chose a group of people to, choose to manifest his law through. In other words, out of all the people in history that existed, God chose a certain man who would father and be the the progenitor of a certain group of people and among that group of people he would manifest what his expectation is his expectation shows up in his law the group the man he chose was abraham and in genesis chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 he makes a promise to abraham he says from your seed shall all nations of the world be blessed that group of people that came from the loins of abraham were and became known as the Jews. Everybody say the Jews. Now, it does not matter what you think of an uh, ethnic group of people. The Bible is right. It says what it says. And among being other things, the Bible is a very true history book along with being the word of God. So historically in the Bible, God uses this group of people who didn't start as a people to manifest his expectation to manifest his law. Part of his law said that the currency by which man or humanity or his people can get rid of sin is not by wishing sin away, is not by hoping it goes away, but the currency for getting rid of sin is blood. Everybody look at Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. I'm going to move swiftly. I need you to understand this. When I say currency, think of, think of it, I'm using this word to put you in the mind of money, right? The, mind, the way money works is money is currency. And if you, you got to have the right currency uh, to purchase whatever it is, right? If something's $20, you can't give $5 to purchase something that costs $20. You have the right currency, but you don't have the right amount. If you are in China, you can't go to China and give them a $10 bill from the United States because, or certain other places, unless you exchange it for the currency used in China. Are you understanding this? Because you might have currency that's worth something somewhere, but it's not worth something in China. Does that make sense to everybody? When it comes to God, God has prescribed a certain currency by which man can, in his old system, can get rid of his sins, okay? 
And what was the currency? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse number 22, what does it say? And according to the law, according to the law, one may almost say, uh huh, all things are cleansed with blood. All things are cleansed with blood and without shedding of blood. And without what? Shedding of blood. Without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. There is no forgiveness of sin. How, what is the currency under the old system to get your sins forgiven? There had to be what? blood everybody say that there had to be what blood. blood that was the currency i don't care how much money you had it didn't matter how much uh land you had it didn't ha matter how much how many precious jewels you had god prescribed that if you wanted to get rid of your sin under the old covenant the only way and the only thing that can purchase your redemption from sin is blood okay in the old system, say amen if you're still with me. Amen. Under the old system, it wasn't just any kind of blood. Okay? It had to be the blood of an innocent, pure lamb. Okay? Are you with me? So watch this. If you present it in the old system, if we were all part of the Old Testament, and you just gave an old, beat up, messed up, scarred up, dirty sheep. You got the right animal. But the problem is, you're giving five dollars for something that cost a hundred. You get this currency thing. God said, what pleases me is the currency of blood. But the blood couldn't come from any kind of animal. It had to come from a lamb or at times a bull or a goat or a heifer and that bull, goat, heifer or lamb had to be spotless, had to be innocent. The idea is it takes death to buy life. Are you with me? So it took what? To buy life. And in that death, what had to be shed? Blood. Blood. That's the currency, all right? So, so, now follow me. The Bible says that life and blood are tied together. We see that. Everybody go to Leviticus. We'll wait on you. Believe it or not, we're almost finished. But I want you to be educated even on this season. Even on this season. At no, at no point do we have an excuse for biblical ignorance. I'm, I, 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 as a minister and other ministers and the elders and leadership here, we don't want to let ignorance come in here and leave as ignorance. And I'm not talking about ignorance as in misbehaving or acting crazy. I'm talking about not knowing. Be educated and know. Now watch what the Bible says under the old system in Leviticus chapter 17 and verse number 11. What does the Bible say? For the life of the flesh is the blood. Uh oh, the life of the flesh is the blood. You see that? Watch the tie. The I... life of all flesh is in the blood. If the life is in the blood, in order to give a life, what has to be shed? Blood. blood. You see the currency of God. Do you understand God's currency? So while we give and we tie, and we offer and we give this kind of currency the problem is this is not the currency that can buy or be exchanged for forgiveness of sins now it might be exchanged for your forgiveness some people will forgive you if you hand these out say that again he ain't lying. I ain't lying. But man is different from God. God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. The currency by which you exchange for forgiveness from God under the system of law was blood. And it had to be the blood of an innocent, pure lamb. Are you with me? Here's the problem with that. 
under that system, when they would do that every year, it was not sufficient. If it was sufficient, they wouldn't have to do it every year. Amen. So every year they would bring this animal before God and before the priest and the priest would check the animal out. And it's a beautiful thing because it doesn't matter. It didn't matter how messed up I was because the priest wasn't going to look at me. The priest was going to look at the sacrifice. Oh God, there's so much preaching in that. That's just downright ridiculous. If you don't see that, it didn't matter how messed up I was. It didn't matter if I had scars or bruises or if I didn't take a shower in 10 days. As long as the lamb I brought was pure, then that pure lamb was going to cover my filthy life. Okay? The problem was under that system with a literal goat or literal bull or literal heifer or literal uh, 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 goat or a lamb, the problem was they had to do it every year. It was called the Day of Atonement. They had to do these priests, uh, these feast days and, and sacrifices every year. The Day of Atonement, the Passover. And included in the Passover, do you remember back when they were leaving out of Egypt and God said, take, take the blood of a lamb uh, uh, without blemish, a young lamb, and you kill that lamb and you take the blood and you smear it over the doorpost? The only, the only currency that the death angel respected was the blood. They could have put a pot of gold in front of their house. The deaf angel would have still came in because currency in heaven is different from currency down here. All right? So the problem is they had to do it every year. That brings us to our text. Watch, watch this. Read verse number one of Hebrews chapter 10. Verse number one. Watch this. This is the Hebrew writer talking and dealing with this old system. Read. For the law, since it is our only has a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very form of things can. That system, watch this, was like a preview before the movie. Okay? It was a preview before the movie. You know what previews are, right? You just see glimpses of it. Glimpses of the movie, right? Previews are designed for you to appreciate the movie. Amen. Are you understanding this? Nobody goes and says they saw the movie because they saw the previews. No? I hope you don't do that. <laughs> Did you see that movie? Yeah, I saw it. It was between, it, was, it came on in the commercial. No, that was not the movie. That was the preview. You don't fall in love with the preview. The preview just basically says something better is coming. Right? That's why we don't like deceptive previews, right? Where they show all the high points of the movie. Then you go to the movie, pay your money, and the movie's corny. You don't like that, right? But when the previews have integrity, they give you a glimpse and they make you want to see the movie, right? The preview of the New Testament was the Old Testament. Are you understanding this? So watch this. You don't want to stay with the preview. You don't want to keep watching the preview. As a matter of fact, you can't say that you've seen the movie no matter how many times you watch the preview. The preview would repeat over and over to get you ready for the movie. These sacrifices happened over and over in the New Testament to get them ready for the feature premiere. Amen. Premiere feature, right? Now, now watch this. Look at what it says. Read. Can never by the same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make perfect those who draw near so no matter how many t how many years they did this once a year it would never make the person perfect if it made it perfect the next verse says then they wouldn't have to keep doing it they had to keep doing it year after year after year they had to keep bringing a goat or a lamb or, or a bull or a heifer and it had to be innocent and pure and they had to do this every year every year and then the lamb would have to die be cut and bleed out and and, and be put on the altar the blood sprinkled in the in the and the blood taken into the holiest place it was just a bloody mess it was just a repetition it was just laborious year after year read Otherwise, would they not have ceased to be offered because Read. the worshipers having once been cleansed would no longer have had consciousness of if sins? If it was enough, they wouldn't have had to keep doing it. Right? Read. But in those sacrifices, there is reminder of sins year by year. Every time that time of year came around, 
they'd be reminded of their sins. You know why? Because guess what they're doing? They're paying the currency for sin. So it would bring right back up to their face their sinfulness as they, as they watched as the lamb or the goat or the bull or the heifer had to die and look at that lamb and see that that lamb should have been them but the lamb is dying for them. Are you seeing this? Now watch this, read. We almost done, read. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, Wait a minute, they did it every year. But the reason why they had to do it every year is because it is impossible for the blood of these goats and bulls and heifers and lambs to ever completely take sin away. If it was able to take sin away completely, they wouldn't have, that's like paying taxes every year. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just pay taxes once and for all? Brother Leon, you know, he's the, he's the tax guy. Oh yeah, it wouldn't be nice for him because that's a good lucrative for you, right? <laughs> But it sure would be nice, say amen in here, if, the, if you would be feel blessed and get do a praise dance if the government say, this is your last tax you ever have to pay. Some of y'all about to get out of your seat now. No, sit down, be humble, sit down. So every year they had to do this. And every year we pay taxes. But it's impossible for the taxes of last year to do away with our debt of taxes completely. That's how it was with that. It's impossible for the blood, the currency that God demanded under the old system to ever take sin away completely. The next verse. How many of you understand this so far? Amen. Watch this. Read. Therefore. That, ooh, because that didn't work. Therefore. What? When he comes into the world. When he comes into, who is the he? The he is Jesus. Look at what he says, read. Sacrifice and offering you have he not desired. He quotes desire. scripture and says, sacrifice and offerings you don't desire. Why? Because they do not do away completely with sin. But look what he says. But a body you have Now, everybody me. say, but a body. But a body. Okay, now watch this. In whole wait, wait, <laughs> please. But a body. Now, John one, follow this. This is gonna grab you if you stay with it. John one one. You do know that Jesus was not always his name. Okay, names. Off for down here. Names are what we use to identify people. So, what was he before he got a name down here? John 1 and 1 says what? In the beginning was the word. Wait, his name wasn't the word. He was the word. He didn't have a proper name. He didn't need to have a proper name. Names are for down here. And not only did he not have a name, he didn't have a body. Ah. In the beginning, was the word Amen. and the word was God and the word was with God and the word was and God. the word was God now here's the problem here's the dilemma what is the currency what is the currency that God demands for the forgiveness of sin blood blood when Jesus was there in the beginning he was in spirit matter of fact go to Luke 24 39 Jesus says something very interesting about spirits say amen if you're being educated in the word 
Look at what Jesus says in Luke 24 and verse 39. Write this down. All right? I've learned that the reason why some things are brand new five years later for some of us, because five years ago we didn't listen to it. So write it down, highlight it, learn this, be educated, be inspired, and be changed. Jesus says something very interesting. This is after his resurrection. When they couldn't, when they didn't believe it was him. What does he say? See my hands. He said, see my hands. And my feet. And my feet. That is myself. It is myself. Touch me. Touch me. And see me. See me. For a spirit does not have What does he say flesh. about a spirit? A spirit. What? Does not have flesh. In does bones. not have what? Flesh. Flesh and what? And bone. And bone. And if he does not have flesh, flesh is the container for what pure, what powerful substance? Blood. In John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word. He was in spirit. So he could not pay the currency that God demands for forgiveness so in verse 14 of John chapter oh I'm getting excited I want to run all over this place y'all don't know okay in verse 14 of John 1 look at what the logos has to do in verse 1 it says in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God verse 14 says what and the word became flesh. And the word became flesh. Flesh. And dwelt among us. And dwelt among us. Now, 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 now. I know this is the season where we're talking about baby Jesus. Right? What you say? What? Now, Kendrick, the singer, said, Baby Jesus, eight pounds, nine ounces. I don't know what you get that from or what you get. <laughs> Jesus, laid in a manger. Nativity scene. Whenever you unhitch the birth of Jesus from the purpose of Jesus, the most you'll ever do is celebrate his birth and you will never submit to his lordship. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Baby Jesus, nativity scene, right? Oh, holy night, the star. Stop looking at one piece of the puzzle and thinking you figured out the picture. You cannot divorce why he even was born from his purpose. As a matter of fact, while we sing about angels and wise men bringing gifts to Jesus, do you not know that Jesus, that there's some Galilean parent that lost their baby because Jesus came? Everybody go to Matthew 2, 16. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's take a closer look. If we're not careful in the church, we'll just go with the trends of society and forsake what God tells us. At the end of the day, we got to go with what God tells us. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this, but what I'm saying is get a full understanding of how this thing works. In, in Matthew chapter 2, verse 16, watch this, Jesus is born, right? The nativity scene. But, you know, people, a lot of people stop there. Uh, the masses stop there in society. You do realize that because Jesus was born and the king at that time had a, an insecurity complex... What happens in Matthew chapter 2, verse 16? Then when Herod saw 
that he had been tricked by the Magi. When he had been tricked by the wise men who said, well, you know, Jesus, we're not coming to worship Jesus. They, they, they threw him off. What does he do? He became very enraged. He became enraged. And sent and slew all the male children who were in Bethlehem. Wait a minute. Jesus gets here and you have the second mass abortion. Post-birth abortion in history. You have this large massacre. Some parent, some mother and father with a one and a half year old son. A decree goes out in Bethlehem from the king Herod who says my son, our son has to be killed. All because Jesus was born. In his birth, the innocent dies. In his death, the innocent one dies. So, so, so okay, so we got the nativity scene. Now, what, what does this mean? What does this all mean? It means this. The text says, Hebrews 10 and 5, when he comes, he says, these kind of sacrifices you don't desire, but a body thou hast prepared me. Why? Why would he need a body? Because bodies are the thing that contain the currency. And the currency for sin is blood. So when he was born and he came to earth and God sent Jesus to be born in the manger, he was born so that he can be in a body that bleeds. <coughs> he was born so that he can bleed. The only currency that makes a difference is blood. And so he's born. He walks the face of the earth. And angels come and worship him at his birth. And the magi, the wise men, worship him as they celebrate. So man worships the newborn baby. He gets gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Yet it will only be 33 years later that the same humanity that worshiped him at his birth will call for his death by saying let him be crucified so Christians people of God people who know better don't stop at the celebration of his birth but they hitch his birth on to his purpose and if it were not for the currency of blood, for the forgiveness of sin, there would be no nativity scene. And I'm not saying don't celebrate the birth and the swallowing clothes and being born in a manger and the virgin. No, I'm saying don't see it as the only picture. Don't isolate it because it's not isolated. He was born so that he can bleed. And the only way he can bleed is to be born in a body that contains blood. So only two times. The text says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5, but a body you've prepared for me. There are only two people in history who God prepared a body for. The first person in history that God prepared a body for is Adam. When God created man, he formed, shaped, he was involved in the process. Now watch this. It was the miraculous beginning that would lead into a natural succession. 
Are you understanding this? He creates Adam and forms him and shapes him out of dust. And the Bible says he breathes into Adam the breath of life and he becomes a living soul. A miraculous beginning and a natural succession. Every man and woman from that point gets here by procreation. Thus yielding Adam and Eve to perhaps be the only two people in history that didn't have a belly button. You do know where belly buttons come from. You don't know where belly buttons come from. Umbilical cord connected to the mama. Why wouldn't Adam have one? Because he didn't come from a mama. He was miraculously, his body was prepared by God. Miraculously. Adam messes up. And God says, in order to save man with the currency I accept, I've got to prepare another body. But he didn't prepare it out of dust. The reason why he did not prepare it out of dust, everybody go to Genesis 3.15, I'm coming down to the end. The reason why he didn't prepare it out of dust, because God declared something to Adam after he sinned. In Genesis 3.19, God says of Adam, for dust you are. And to dust, you shall return. There's a problem with that. And the problem with that, with what God is going to do, is that whoever is going to save the offspring of Adam can't end up returning to the same thing that Adam returned to. So God had to customize a body. And how did he do it? He didn't do it like Adam. The Bible says in Genesis 3.15 what? Come on with me. And I'll put enmity between you and he the woman. He talks to the devil. He says, I'm going to put hostility between you and the woman. Read. And between your seed. Between your seed and her seed. And read. He shall bruise you on the head. He shall bruise your head. And you shall bruise him now, on the Now, now go back and underline her seed. Are you with me still? Say amen. amen. Right. Here's the problem. When it comes to empirical science and biology, everybody knows who has any level of degree of knowledge when it comes to human biology and growth and development that the man carries the seed and the woman carries the egg. But God says something that defies empirical science and biology. He says, I'm going to put hostility between your seed, Satan, and the seed of the woman women don't carry seeds men carry seeds that was a prophecy that God was preparing a body that was not like the body of Adam so in Luke chapter 3 there's a pregnant virgin and she got pregnant because the Holy Spirit overshadowed her and when the spirit of the Lord overshadowed her, she ended up pregnant, having both the seed and the egg. Amen. Scientists today would call that a retardation, but those who believe in God call it providence. Amen. Amen. And from that 100% human, 100% God, he received a body and God was born. What a contradiction. God born. God born. God eternal, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, everlasting to everlasting, born, temporal, temporary confined to time, limited to time and space, God born, God born, why? Because the currency had to not only be blood, but had to be perfect. So Jesus literally was born so that he can bleed. 
and he bled so that he can die. And he died so that he could be buried. And most people born under the seed of the man are under the curse of Adam who was told from dust you are and to dust you shall return. But the problem was Jesus didn't just come from a human. He was 100% human and 100% God. Human enough to die. Human enough to bleed. Human enough to be hung. Human enough to be buried. But God enough not for his body to turn into dust. But three days later, get up out of the grave. Why were you born, Jesus? I was born to bleed for you. Because your currency is not enough. And I'm here to tell you today that Jesus paid the price. You smile before God. And on your best day, our smile is repulsive. Because an uncovered son of Adam can never please God. And so, yeah, he was born to bleed. He was born with death in mind. So while we celebrate and we look at nativity scenes, keep in mind that the only reason why there's a baby in the crib, in and in the cradle, is because there's going to be a sacrifice on the cross. The only reason why there's a womb is because there's going to be a tomb. And I'm so glad he was born for me to bleed for me. I try to behave and do right. and I'm telling you, we're so sinful that sin would slip in the unconscious mind. What, what do you mean, preacher? I'm saying we are sin in our sleep. And I'm not saying the sin of doing something, but sin is so wired within us that our dreams will display sin. I mean, we will sin in our dreams even. That's how sinful we are. And I I know you have no control over your dreams, and I get that. But if you have no control over your dreams, then how is it that even sin can be found in your dreams? I mean, you're dreaming about something and waking up and glad that it was a dream. And you're waking up asking God for forgiveness and all you did was go to sleep and dream. Don't you know that we are so wired with sin and we are not worthy enough to pay the to pay the currency that God demanded but God in the fullness of time sent forth Jesus to be born made of a woman born under the law why when it was all said and done and justice stood at the counter and says now who's going to pay for the sin of Nate who's going to pay for Hamilton's sin who's going to pay for Chris's sin who's going to pay for Gerald's sin and Abraham's step up but all he has is faith but faith is not the currency for sin oh no it's not the currency Isaac steps up Jacob steps up and even the prophets step up and they at best can only bring prayer and faith to the counter of justice through the toils of time there arises someone who was 100% man 100% God and said I'll pay the price I have the currency and one Friday hanging on the cross from his wrist flowed the currency that would pay for our redemption he lays his blood on the counter he says here you go Chris is free Hamilton is free Kendrick is free Sister Clayton you're free you're free you're free I paid for you. I I paid for you. You were celebrating me being born. But that was just the way for me to bleed. You're free. Now he says, come to me and be covered by my blood. If 
you are here this morning and you are not covered by the blood of Jesus, why not? Why not? Coming to church is not strong enough currency. We like that you're here, but the only currency that God accepts is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Will you come believing that he is the son of God, repenting of your sins, confessing Jesus with your lips and life? Will you come being baptized for the remission of those sins? He'll wash your sins away. He'll fill you with his spirit. He'll cover you by his blood so that when God looks at you, he sees a reflection of himself. The mirror that stands between us and God to where God can look at us and see himself is covered by the blood and with the blood of Jesus. He was born to bleed. For without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Stand to your feet. If you need to come, come believing. Come now. You say, I know it's Christmas Eve. I can't think of a better time to give your life to Jesus. And on the day when the nation pauses from everything it's doing to celebrate his birth. But that's how far, that's, that's as far as some will ever go. Celebrate that he was born. Jesus is born. Thank you. No use admiring the baby if you're not going to subject to the Lord and submit to the Lord. No, you, no, you, no use admiring a baby. I know you, I know society says we're going to celebrate the baby. But the question is not if, you, if you're going to celebrate the baby. The question is, are you going to submit to the Lord? You can't love baby Jesus and reject crucified Jesus. Because there's only a baby Jesus so that there could be a crucified Jesus. Amen. So if you need to come, we invite you to come right now. Wherever you are in the house, don't look and worry about it. Maybe you're here and you need prayer for whatever it is. Bring it to the altar. Don't go out of here with whatever that is. If you need to come and be baptized for the remission of your sins, if you say you believe, if you say you believe, if you really believe, baptism is for those who believe. Do you believe? If you believe, affirm that through your obedient baptism and being added with Christ. Come right now. We're going to sing, and we want you to come. Maybe you need prayer. Listen.